so here I am on my rooftop unit. It is circuit one, this one, that's off, that uh, has the leak. Our leak is down here, way back there. So, gonna recover what's in it, repair it, evacuate it, pressure test it, recharge it. It's like 110 degrees up here. I'm probably gonna have to put some ice on here. This, this recovery process, you get hot refrigerant coming into this container, so many times you gotta put ice on there to, or, or it won't pump it in. So it's been going for like maybe 30 seconds, a minute now. This is already getting getting hot. I mean, it's already hot because it's like hot up here, but it's getting hot and this temperature this pressure is going up real quick. I've got this side feeding and this side just connected to it to kind of give me a pressure measurement on the suction side. Once this gets up to like 300, I'm gonna have to go get some ice. I'm gonna have to stop it and go get some ice. Also, I got a fan motor out up here. Maybe I won't need to go get some ice. I think I might not. Yeah, it's gonna be good. We have plateaued on the high side. It's not gonna go up anymore. Picked up the new motor. Half horse, 1075, 460. And I wanna keep it like this. I'm gonna go with the three line circuit. So that way I can put my capacitor in the electrical compartment instead of having it hang down in the uh, condenser outdoor section. This one mounts with a belly band, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim these all back. According to this thing right here, I'm gonna put the cap, I'm gonna insulate the brown and white wire. I'm gonna go up there and check the unit out before I start cutting wires. Yeah, so there's my unit, and that's where my fan goes, right there. So I've got three wires coming in, they're right there. So we've got a a purple, purple, orange, and black go into the fans. Purple, orange, and black. Yes, purple, orange, and black. So, I should be able to put my capacitor right in there, drop it right in, and then that's gonna, that's gonna be right. 
In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off this unit so nothing's hot. All right, and my capacitor, it's in. Wires are in already, so I'm gonna turn it on and check rotation. pressures we run on this thing now earlier it was at 350 man that's much better now in order to get down in here because it's so far back there in the corner i've got this panel that i took off or loosened up but now these wires are holding me up so i've got to take those loose so this thing will swing all the way down and i can reach down in there easier all right it doesn't go too far down because that's that right there is stopping me but I can reach down there a little, a little easier now. So, kind of, kind of. I'm just gonna go over it with the torch and some solder instead of, I was thinking about cutting it and putting a coupling on it, but I don't think that's necessary. Especially because of how difficult it is to access. And I've only got to really hit it on the bottom side. Oh. All right, I'm okay with that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and solder that bitch. See what happens. All right. I got it, I think. So that's that. We're gonna find out though. Here, I'm gonna pull a vacuum on the circuit and see if I can get the vacuum pump to get down to a vacuum deep enough to where when I close my, my gauges off, there's no change of sound. So if you listen closely, you can hear the sound it's making. And when we introduce some air into it, like this, that's the noise it makes, and it slowly starts getting quieter, like that, as the vacuum gets deeper. So we want to get it to where, when we close these, like there should still be a change of sound right now when we close these. Let's try it. It should get completely quiet compared to what that is right now, what it's doing right now. So let's see. Well, it's pretty damn quiet. All right, so I'm gonna open this and we're gonna listen to that. Oh man, that's good. That's, we're in a deep vacuum right now. I think we got it. You see, vacuums are so revealing for any kind of seepage of air into the system. If, if, if that was leaking and, and air was getting into the system right now, when I do this, we would hear it. We would hear the, the vacuum pump make a change of sound, similar to that when we open it. But the fact that we got nothing, no change of sound, when I'm doing this, that means that we got a good sealed system. There's also no leaks anywhere else in the system. Now, stop, we're gonna close these off nice and tight. And of course, there's no change of sound in the vacuum pump when we do that. Close those off nice and tight, okay? Then we turn that off. And we get our bottle of refrigerant here. Take our hose. Put it in our refrigerant with one hand. I always do. Open the bottle. Purge the line. And break the vacuum with refrigerant into the liquid side. 
a normal flowing system this will start to creep up immediately as you can see and then if you want to do a little bit of extra good in case you think you didn't get everything you can when it's barely a positive pressure you can crack it a little bit right there and that's what I call a, a good pure system mm -hmm. got my probe right here to measure my um, temperature coming out of the coil so that's my discharge temperature even though it's under a negative pressure through the, the damn uh, blower motor all right turn this off now and I'm gonna start to start it back up there you go uh, whoo freaking hot out here man there's my circuit that I just fixed on so before it cuts out Start charging her up. Oh yeah, she loves that. Oh yeah, man. Now we've got the R22 dial here. We're right at 89 degrees roughly, approximately, something like that. Now what I've always found when I'm charging up a system and it's low on refrigerant, when the liquid line print temperature keeps going up, keeps going up, it's gonna stop going up. Let's say it goes up to 115 and then it stops going up at 115 and it starts going back down. All this is while you're, you're charging it, of course. At the point where it hits 115 and starts coming back down, that's where you have achieved a full liquid line, a full column of liquid, and that's when you have started um, developing subcool. Tell you what, when it's so freaking hot up here, this is how you do it right here. Oh. I wish I could explain to you how great this feels and you could understand. So where I am now, I got about 114, 116 right there. Maybe one, yeah, 114. And 106. So I got an eight degree sub pool. I want a little more. Got 65 degree discharge air temp with both circuits running. Stabilized with about a 116 degree liquid saturation, 105 degree liquid line temp, about 11 degrees of subcooling there. So I had someone who goes by the handle of Refi Refi and who otherwise wants to hide behind his YouTube name, comment on my most recent 18 minutes of filthy chicken case video. He threatened to rat me out to my supervisors if I didn't take these videos down within 24 hours, which would in all likelihood cost me my job. So I took the videos in which stores could be identified or recognized and made them all private for now. I'll gradually edit them but I'll still make videos, just more discreetly. This is either a person who has some kind of vested interest in one of these stores and doesn't want the filth of their neglect to be out there for the public to see. And if that's the case, I don't blame them. And I respect that position. Or it's someone who works with me who just is just being a hater and a bitch, since this person named my supervisors by their actual names. So this is what's happening with my channel and why all my videos are not available. But I'm still here. I'm still making videos, and I'm just going to do the best to keep my job, but if it costs me my job, then fuck it. Thanks for hanging in there, y'all.